What's that lovely smell? Buns. I just baked them. Here, try one. Oh, thanks. <sighs> Ouch, they're hot. Of course they're hot, silly. They're hot cross buns. Hot cross buns, hot cross buns. One a penny, two a penny, hot cross buns. If you have no daughters, give them to your sons. One a penny, two a penny, hot cross buns. Hot cross buns, hot cross buns. One a penny, two a penny, hot cross buns. If you have no daughters, give them to your sons. One a penny, two a penny, hot cross buns. Hello, hamsters. Hello, Hello Dotty. I want to borrow some powder. You don't need makeup, Dotty. Your shiny nose suits you. No, I mean washing powder, you little flatterer. But I thought you always did your washing by magic, Dotty. I did, dear, until the other day. Listen to what happened. Dotty's wash day. I had been busy all morning doing my washing. I've done enough. I said at last, it's such a hot day, the wet clothes can take themselves out to dry. I'm going to put my feet up. I took my magic dish mop and waved it at the pile of washing. Out of the basket leapt the socks, pyjamas and petticoats, towels and tracksuits and tights. One by one, they marched out of the kitchen into my garden. Then, what do you think happened? When they got to the washing line, it was far too high for them to reach. The shirts stretched up their arms, but couldn't reach it. The petticoats tried jumping up, but they couldn't reach it. The pyjama top tried to help the tights, but they couldn't reach the washing line either. They all got so hot that they started steaming. And they ended up flopping into the dirt. Stop! shouted the old starched shirt, who was a bit bossy and always thought he knew best. This is no good at all. Why don't we get the step ladder? We can use it to climb up to the washing line and hang ourselves out to dry. So off went the clothes, tramping over the flower beds to get the step ladder. It was propped against the house and was very old and dirty. The starched shirt, the blouse and the long underpants tried to pick up the ladder, but it wouldn't move. Come on, you lot, shouted the starched shirt. Don't just stand there and watch. It's going to take every one of us to move this. So puffing and panting, they all helped to drag the ladder over to the washing line. It was very hard work, and they all got dirtier and dirtier. But at last, they climbed up the steps and spread themselves along the line to dry. When I woke up from my snooze, I went out to see if my nice clean washing was dry. Oh, what a mess! I shrieked. The clothes were dirtier than before they had been washed. I'll have to wash you all again. But this time, I'll hang you out to dry myself. I waved my magic dish mop and the clothes jumped off the line and marched back to the washing machine for a really good bath. Well, 
it's a very good day for drying clothes, Dotty. Listen to the wind. And look at the leaves. The wind's blowing them everywhere. There's a poem about the wind and the leaves. Now, what is it called, Carol? Leaves in a Frolic. The leaves had a wonderful frolic. They danced to the wind's loud song. They whirled and they floated and scampered. They circled and flew along. The moon saw the little leaves dancing. Each looked like a small brown bird. The man in the moon smiled and listened. And this is the song he heard. The north wind is calling, is calling, and we must whirl round and round. And when our dancing is ended, we'll make a warm quilt for the ground. Will you shut the window, please, Morris? It's freezing in here. Ow! Mind your fingers. Too late. Anyway, this room is boiling hot. It's like a fridge. It's like an oven. Hamsters, hamsters. If you're interested in quarrelling, listen to Nigel's story. It's got quarrelling enough for both of you. The Wind and the Sun High above the sky in Weatherland, the sun and the wind were quarrelling. They were getting very cross. I'm stronger than you are, said the wind, huffing and puffing himself up to look important. No, you're not. I'm stronger, said the sun. His face glowed brighter and brighter as he grew hotter and hotter. They made so much noise that soon the weatherman arrived. What is going on? he asked. It's the sun's fault, hissed the wind. That's not true. The wind is to blame, replied the sun. No. No, the weatherman no, frowned. Listen to me, son. I then he this. held his hands over his ears and cried, no, Stop! I stop! Am the stop! I am the, I am the, the wind and the sun looked round. They were both quiet for a moment. Now, will you tell me why you two are arguing so? demanded the weatherman. It's silly, really, began the wind. The sun won't agree that I'm stronger than he is. And that's because you're not, said the sun hotly. They began shouting again. The noise woke up the rain who'd been sleeping. I can't get any rest, he moaned. Neither could I, added the snow who suddenly rushed in. He was so cold that all the others shivered, except for the sun who was always warm. I'm supposed to be on holiday until next winter, the snow went on. He turned to the wind and the sun. You two are spoiling it. Quite said the rain. You must do something, weatherman. After all, you are in charge of us. Oh, uh, very well, nodded the weatherman. He sat down to think very hard. For a while, he stroked his long, white beard. Then, suddenly, he jumped up. Of course, he cried. I will set a test for the wind and the sun. Come along, you two. Then he called to the rain. I'll need your help, too, if you please. A cloud carried the weatherman through the sky. Before long, he saw a man below him. The stranger was sawing up an old fallen tree trunk into logs. Already, he'd nearly filled a big basket. The man was working hard, and he'd taken off his long cloak. Now, the weatherman whispered to the rain, first, you must send down a little shower so the man puts on his cloak. The rain was rather puzzled, but he did as he was asked. All the while, the wind and the sun watched. Sure enough, when it began to rain, the man put down his saw and quickly pulled on his cloak. I can't work in this rain, he thought. I'll come back and finish off the job later. He began to hurry home. Hardly he set off down the lane when the rain stopped. But the weatherman spoke to the sun and the wind. You must each try to make him take his cloak off. Whoever wins is the stronger. Agreed? Easy, sniffed the wind. I will go first and do that in no time. Just watch me. The wind took a deep breath. <sighs> then he blew hard. How the wind howled, whoosh! But the man clung on tightly to his cloak. It's my turn, said the sun, as the wind panted. 
not yet, the wind replied. I'll blow harder. The wind sailed down closer to the stranger and blew as he'd never blown before. Trees groaned and branches swayed. The man leaned over and held the cloak even tighter to him. This strange wind, he thought. It's so cold. The weatherman rubbed his chin. You must have a try now, he told the sun. So the sun came out. At first, he shone gently on the man, who was very surprised. What odd weather we're having today, he said to himself. But he felt much warmer. So he loosened his cloak. The sun smiled. Then he shone harder. It grew very warm. The man looked up and felt the warmth of the sunshine. I'm too hot in this cloak now, he thought. In a moment, he'd taken it off. Then he sat down beside a tree to sunbathe for a while before beginning work again. The sun wins. He is the stronger, said the weatherman. The rain nodded and the sun looked pleased. That's not fair, sulked the wind as they all went back to weatherland. Yes, it is, chuckled the sun. Sometimes you can win by being nice, not nasty. The weatherman nodded. That's what I thought too. The wind has learnt a lesson. And sure enough, there was peace and quiet in Weatherland at last. Oh, look, Maurice, it's snowing. Hooray! Let's make a snowman. Aren't the snowflakes beautiful? Let's make snowballs. Look at the snowflakes Flitter fluttering down from the sky. Gosh, Doris, you are so soppy. Listen to the song. See the snowflakes falling, falling. See the snowflakes softly fall. From our window we can see snow on every hedge and tree cold and white and crisp and clean hiding everything that's green see the snowflakes falling falling see the snowflakes softly fall in the streets each roof and bus has a snowy coat like us once these things were all bright red Now they're fluffy white instead See the snowflakes falling, falling See the snowflakes softly fall Yesterday the sky was blue Now the snowflakes hide it too All the world is dressed in white Glimmering, shining, crisply bright See the snowflakes falling, falling See the snowflakes softly fall See the snowflakes falling, falling See the snowflakes softly fall Maurice, a bird. Ah, oh, it's little Robin Redbreast. How pretty he looks. You're not going to go all soppy again, are you, Doris? No, I'm not. It's not at all soppy to be interested in birds. Poor old Robin Redbreast is being blown all over the place by the wind. Oh, shall we sing a song for him? What a good idea. Let's sing The North Wind Doth Blow. The north wind doth blow, and we shall have snow. And what will the robin do then? Poor thing, he'll sit in a barn to keep himself warm and hide his head under his wing. Poor thing. The north wind doth blow, and we shall have snow. And what will the robin do then? Poor thing. He'll sit in a barn to keep himself warm And hide his head under his wing, poor thing The north wind doth blow
blow, and we shall have snow. And what will the robin do then? Poor thing, he'll sit in a barn to keep himself warm, and hide his head under his wing. Poor thing. Hello, hamsters. How I love to hear you sing. Oh, thank you, Dotty. Of course, I've always had a sweet voice, but even Morris is getting quite good, isn't he? What cheek? I think you both sound very nice. Oh. Have you got a watering can I could borrow? On the scrounge again, eh? Morris, don't be so rude. <clears throat> I thought you watered your garden by magic, Dotty. Oh, I do, dear. But a watering can is just the thing to give my nephews their orange juice in. Mm. It stops them spilling any. Uh, Carol knows a story with a watering can in it. Does she, dear? Oh, do tell me. A home for Hoppy. <laughs> Hoppy the Frog sat in the shade of a hedge out of the hot sun. There had been no rain for weeks. The earth was hard, and the pond where Hoppy lived had dried up. Every day he went looking for a new home. One day he hopped into a garden and found a watering can full of lovely cool water. Hoppy dived straight in and splashed around. Uh? He said happily. I think I'll stay here for the rest of the day. It's so cool and wet, though it's not nearly as big as my pond was. Just then a lady came out of the house. She picked up the watering can and then she screamed and dropped it. Ah! Oh! She'd seen Hoppy. She ran back into the house. Soon a man came out of the house. He picked up the watering can and poured out all the water, and Hoppy as well. Hoppy leapt out of reach. It's only a little frog, the man called back. Nothing to be afraid of. But Hoppy was just as frightened as the lady had been, and he scurried away and hid in some long grass. The grass kept the sun off him, and he settled down for an afternoon nap. When he woke up, he could hear children playing nearby. He moved closer, listened again, and yes, it wasn't just children's voices he could hear. There was the sound of splashing water too. Hoppy crept nearer and nearer. Mmm, delicious, thought Hoppy, and he hopped right into the garden where the children were playing. He hid under a bush and watched them. They've got their own little pond, thought Hoppy, as the children leapt in and out of their paddling pool, shouting and giggling. He longed to join them, but he didn't dare. At last, the children went indoors for their tea. In a flash, Hoppy had leapt across the lawn and dived into the pool with a big splash. Oh, lovely, he said to himself. Now, I wouldn't mind staying here, but I'm sure the children wouldn't let me. As he swam round and round, thinking about this and that, he didn't notice that the sky had grown dark. Suddenly, a brilliant flash of lightning darted across the sky. There was a clap of thunder, and another and another. Then huge drops of rain began to fall. Hoppy climbed onto the edge of the pool and danced around for joy as the drops of water bounced off his back and into the pool. Grow, grow. Lovely rain, lovely water, he sang to himself. The more it rained, the more he danced and sang for joy. He knew that his old pond would soon be full of water again and he wouldn't need to look for a new home anymore.
put your overcoat, Morris. Yes. And your gloves. Yes. And your hat and scarf and boots. Yes, yes, yes. What do you want to know for? Because it's rhyme time and we're going for a walk. Rhyme time. Hooray! Taking a walk. When you go out for a walk, there are lots of things to do. Some suit summer, some suit winter. See how many things suit you. When it's hot, you'll see your shadow. Watch it walking, watch it run. Shadows never disappear, just so long as there is sun. When it's cold, the strongest winds are sometimes strong enough to lean on. But if the gusts should stop, take care, falling down, you won't be keen on. When it's hot, you'll see the flowers in the park and under trees. Look and smell, but never pick. Please leave the blossoms for the bees. When it's cold, the fallen leaves make a lovely crunchy sound. Tread them down, then kick them up and spread those fallen leaves around. When it's hot, look in the garden. You may find a water hose. Put your swimming costume on and spray yourself, but mind your nose. When it's cold, your limbs get frozen. Hug yourself and jump around. Soon you'll be as warm as toast. Now look at all the games you found. Doris, you are a magic hamster, aren't you? Of course I am. And you're magic too, aren't you, Dotty? Yes, dear, but I never know exactly how my spells are going to turn out. Why do you ask? Because all three of us are magic, but we haven't said a single spell all day. Oh, well, let's say our story spell. All together now. Bing, bang, bong, rattle, dat, dat, dat. Let's have a story just like, like that. Right. Um, oh. Ooh. I don't think that was quite right, Dotty. Sorry, dear. You two try again. Bing, bang, bong, rat-a-tat-tat, -tat -tat. let's have a story just like that. The Jelly Who Caught a Cold. Well done, hamsters. <laughs> the little red jelly sat on the plate in the fridge and wobbled. Suddenly, he sneezed. <laughs> Gran wondered what the noise was and went to look in the fridge. Opening the door, she saw the poor little jelly shivering. My, my, said Gran. Whatever is the matter with you? I don't know, replied the jelly. But I feel awful. Gran took the jelly out of the fridge and put him on the table. I know what's the matter with you, she said. You've caught a cold. Now, let me give you a nice hot drink, and then you can keep warm by the fire. But I melt, cried the little red jelly. Then Gran had an idea. I know, she said happily. I'll knit you a hat and scarf. <laughs> Spluttered the jelly. That would be lovely. Oh, yes, please. So Gran grabbed her knitting needles and wool and set to work. Click, click, click went her knitting needles. And quite soon she had finished. There now, said Gran. Try these on. And she gave the little red jelly a blue and white hat with a bobble on and a long blue and white scarf. Putting on his new clothes, the little red jelly smiled with delight. Thank you! I love my new hat and scarf! He said, wobbling to and fro. Soon the little red jelly had stopped sneezing and felt quite warm. Do you think you'll be able to go back into the fridge? asked Gran. Oh, yes, said the jelly. I could even go to the North Pole now. 
Gran chuckled and put him back in the fridge. Good night. Good night and thank you, said the jelly. You won't eat me, will you? <laughs> what? With a hat and scarf on? laughed Gran. Of course not. <laughs> Gran shut the fridge door and smiled. She was thinking how funny the little red jelly looked in his hat and scarf. Out. Hooray! Let's go out and play. Yes, let's enjoy the sun. Let's sing about the sun. After all, Doris, you have got such a sweet voice. <laughs> Thank you, Morris. When the day has just begun, before we have our breakfast, we throw the window open wide. There's something we must check first. Is it cloudy? Is it wet? If it's windy, we get upset. But goodness gracious, oh, what fun If what we see is sun, sun, sun Sun makes the flowers grow Sun tells the snow to go We like the sun to shine all day Stay here, sun, is what we say Sun makes the flowers grow Sun makes the world go round, sun makes the grass go brown. We like the sun upon our faces, we like the sun in lots of places. Sun makes the world go round. Sun makes the flowers grow, sun tells the snow to go. We like the sun to shine all day. Stay here, the sun is what we say, sun makes the flowers grow. Sun makes the world go round, sun makes the grass go brown. We like the sun upon our faces, we like the sun in lots of places. Sun makes the world go round, go round, go round. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye.